don't forget, we're on Twitter. You can look us up at Inside Out South. Next, we've got smartphones, smart homes. Isn't it time we made ourselves a bit smarter? New technology to link us to our environment is being tested here in the South. But how far would you be willing to go to get with the programme? Sasha Twining's been finding out. The Limington Times is a real country paper. It comes out every Friday and it costs threepence. At least it did in 1963. Since then, the threepence has disappeared, along with many of the country's local newspapers. The circulation area is only a dozen miles from end to end. So this is the site of the hot metal press, the last one in Europe, I think. It's like, you know, the most amazing Aladdin's cave of the printing world. It is. What is that there? These are paper reels. These weigh about half a tonne each. 12 and a half kilometres by the look of it. 12 and a half <laughs> kilometres of paper. Eddie Curry's family have run the Limington Times for over 90 years. Now he's trying to move with the Times. The newspapers now, if they stand still, they will die. And you may look around here and think uh, it looks very dismal and old. It is, but we are going to clad this out and this will be a big photo studio, virtual reality studio. This is just part of what we're doing to branch out, to make use of the space we've got, the skills we've got within the company, and we're determined we will survive. And this was our printing press in January last As part of his master plan, Eddie's also offering rental space to business startups. Uh, entrepreneurs to start their business. But perhaps the biggest trick up his sleeve will be embedded in his hand, a microchip implant, giving him access to the building instead of using key fobs. And he's also offering them to staff. Why do this, Eddie? As you say, you've got your key fobs. You know, well, they get you in everywhere anyway. Well, in my previous career, I had to use one of these for 30 years, and you were there going through your bag trying to find it first thing in the morning. It is a bit of a nuisance. What are the sort of concerns that you're hearing? I think maybe Big Brother or having something medical done to them. Um, I think some people are worried that we'll know where they are, but there's no, they're entirely passive, there's no GPS in them. So far, Eddie's had six people say they're up for the implant. It's a very interesting concept, I think. I'd like to let a few people try it out first before, it, before they put one in me. It just seems a bit pointless when I can have one on my keys. <laughs> you really think it's worth it for the ease of it? I think so, yes, or I wouldn't do it. <laughs> well, here it seems that not everyone is quite so keen, but in the United States it is starting to catch on. And in Sweden, if you have an implant, you can even use it to pay for your train ticket. You know what? I'm quite liking the idea. What's the code? Oh, it's just like that. <laughs> At an industrial estate near Southampton is the human implant company Biotech. Its director, Stephen Northam, has agreed to provide me with my very own microchip. What sort of numbers are we talking? Because this is really new technology. Uh, so currently it's three or four people a day who inquire about having microchips fitted. And is this yours? That's mine, yeah. X-ray of my hand. So that's so it? That's the microchip fitted there. I'm surprised you haven't got this framed and on your wall. Uh, we could put it up anyway, I suppose. <laughs> That's the chip. My chip will be the same model as Stevens, and it'll hold my contact details. A bit like a business card. It's, it's like a grain of rice. So you can add contact data. We'll right. just pick up the chip. We'll drop it on there. It now says it's encoding. That tag is encoded. It's as quick as that. Someone can scan a mobile phone and then download your mobile number, your name, your contact details straight off your hand. Job done. Before I get my implant, I want to see how it works for people in the real world. So this is your outside keypad. So this is it. Yeah. I heard it bleep. <laughs> it's, it's as simple as Fantastic. that. Fantastic. Alex Lewis from Hampshire was an early adopter of microchip implants. As amputees, we're short on time anyway, so anything that can cut our time down, you know, we can't access pockets, everything's in bags, and it's always behind you or in a, it's not easily accessible. But Alex hasn't always been so reliant on technology. So late 2013, I caught what I thought was just a, a common cold and a bit of man flu, as we thought of then. And then it steadily got worse and worse. Over the course well, that man flu turned out to be a deadly flesh-eating form of Streptococcus A. To save his life, surgeons had to amputate each of Alex's limbs. I had a 3% chance of survival. Um, 
And so we, we got really lucky, really, really lucky. That's the mountain that we will be cycling up. So you're, you're going... Alex will soon be cycling up the largest mountain in Ethiopia for charity. And microchips in his upper arms could be vital. I travel extensively now, way more than I ever used to. And we go to all sorts of different countries. And for me, knowing that we could load my medical data onto the microchip, and if anything did happen, to know that a simple app on your phone can scan the chip and then my medical details are there right in front of you. I mean, that to me could be a, a, a life-saving piece of technology. And there will be me. So it's just a couple of minutes before I have my procedure done. It's quite bizarre because we're actually in the middle of an office. And that's the strange thing about this technology. It's currently unregulated. Mine is being implanted by biotech's Dr. Jeff Watson but you could have it done in a tattoo parlour or a piercing salon. So other people could quite simply not necessarily do it themselves, although actually I guess that they might do that yeah, people anyway. Do. People do. Yeah. People buy our kits and uh, insert them themselves or find somebody who's willing to. But I think it's important that they're inserted under medical conditions. So do you want to talk me through what you're going to do? We're going to insert the microchip into okay. the triangle between your thumb and forefinger. So there will be a bit okay. of a buzz from the local anaesthetic, and then once that's in, you won't feel nothing other than some pressure. OK, this is the one I'm absolutely Are you ready? Looking at. Yeah, I'm ready. So you're going to feel a bit of pressure. OK. I'm really nervous and now. A bit of a clunk. OK, right. OK. Is that it? You've now joined the bionic generation. <laughs> So that's, that's it. it yeah. <laughs> Didn't feel that at all. Thank you. Magic. That's amazing. That's the weirdest thing. It'll take a few days for the swelling to go down and my chip to Can work. My hand? Yeah. But when it does, we'll be able to access the data it holds. Mark West is a cybersecurity expert. He's got a warning for me, and all he needs is a phone and a blank key card. I'm just going to use a mobile phone and a free downloadable application to run on that phone and, and do this. And if I now bring that close to the tag, oh, there there you go. It tells me what the data is. But now I've got that, I can very easily take that and reprogram that onto a different card. With the card, I can essentially, um, depending on what you've got stored in here, pretend to be you. I would just think carefully about exactly what data you're putting on that, that chip it's very likely that anybody who knows you've got that chip embedded there would be able to read what's on there. Well, thankfully, my chip's only got my name and phone number on it. Right. Now, the swelling's gone down enough now, so I'm back at Biotech to see it in action for the first time. And now we'll try with the phone. Let's give it a while. See if it'll work. Oh, it's found it. It's found it. <laughs> there you go. That's brought up serial number, the chip, everything on there. And there you are. There it is. Boom. <laughs> so I can now scan your hand with, with a phone and in theory just download your contact details. That was a bit spooky. We, we can try it with a range of phones. <laughs> so. <laughs> so for some, this microchip could be a real lifesaver, but it is new and it's unregulated. And of course that does carry some risks. Should we give it a go? Thank you very much. <laughs> there we go. It's a proper bit of kit. <laughs> <laughs>